Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to set up this Digi Extend here. Um, right now, I have it set up in this little box that allows me to easily have it mobile and have power um, converters and things like that, but you don't need that to program it initially. Um, to program it without the included um, box or the little uh, prototype or the programming board, you don't have to have that, but you do have to have an FTDI chip. And that's what this is. This is for the other um, Digi XB model. And this is a little FTDI chip that already has a pin set up for it. But I'm using it for to program the Extend as well. And all I have connected right now, um, let me focus, is um, data in, data out, RTS, CTS, and the 5 volt power and ground. And also, um, you'll need an additional power connector for the reset pin on the Digi Extend. So as you can see now I have it connected um, to the USB cable and um, there's seven pins that are connected between the two devices and the important one to note is the brown watt pin right there. It's the reset pin and if the device isn't going to be recognized by the computer unless you apply 5 volts or 3.3 volts directly to it which you can usually just take off VCC. For this I just have the 3.3 volts on the um, this breakout board. It has a voltage regulator that outputs there and I just have that connected which works fine. Um, now we're gonna try to see if um, the software will recognize it. Um, let's see if we can get that. Right now um, it should read as a USB serial port and um, as you can see the USB serial port has come for, which is, you can also go to Device Manager and figure that out. And then um, the battery, um, right now I have it programmed at 4800, but you can find the default should be 9600. So if you're setting it up for the first time, you should be able to just hit, leave the default settings and hit finish and it will recognize it. But right now I'm going to just set, up, set it to 4800 and hope it recognizes. There we go. Um, here it's right here. In this particular device, um, for the setup, it's a point to multipoint or multipoint to point. Um, anyway, excuse me, point to multipoint. And so this is one of the multipoint devices that the main extent is transmitting data to. Um, as you can see, I already have it set up with some settings. Um, right here is the modem VID, that's the network. Um, that the other devices are also on, 2222. I just picked a number that's easy to remember. The other important things to note are the source address, which for a multi-point device, let's see if we can find it real fast. On the page 44 here on the data sheet, you can see the point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point networking protocols. And for this device, as I said, we're using point-to-multi-point. And um, for what I'm doing, I'm using the acknowledged communications, um, it, sh it makes some difference mainly due to the retries what you set it to. Um, over here you can see it's already set to 3. Um, the default is, is like A but I've changed that. But to program the device you should just have to um, change, just enter a number and rewrite the information and it's pretty easy. And uh, usually, I've had some trouble with the software not actually writing the information to the device, and so I always refresh to make sure the changes I made are correct, and they are. And so, something that it shows on the data sheet over here is is useful because if I, another device my source is one, then it it, w it may not work correctly. So how you auto set it? It says you have to. Um, all right, if you go to the auto set, what it describes, you have to do it using. Uh, the command log, which to do that you just do plus plus plus, which initializes the connection. And then uh, first, I want to check to see what my at my address is. And so I just type that in, hit enter. It's one right now, which is what I set it to. And then I can uh, reset it to at am, and that will set it to f twenty four b which is, has to do with the serial number of the device. Here um, you can see the issue I've been having with the um, settings, um, being able to write directly from that, and so I've been having to use the console window uh, to program some of the things. So here I'll just demonstrate how the destination address, I am changing, changing it to one right now. 
which it was zero as you can see and so then I do the commands ATWR and ATCN and uh, we'll refresh on this uh, settings menu to make sure the changes took effect and so uh, yeah one of the main things I'd recommend is uh, keep refreshing especially before disconnecting the, to the device to make sure the programming uh, worked correctly or even uh, exiting out of the device and um, re-adding the device to see so here I'm changing the destination address to zero and writing it and then I'm refreshing to see if the uh, change t took effect Um, here I'm entering programming mode again, and I'm checking the, the destination address, and it, again, uh, it's 1 now, so um, I'm changing it back to 0, which is where I want it, and uh, writing and then uh, saving it. So here, refreshing. Um, I don't show it here. I've, I didn't remember to scroll back up, but um, it did take effect uh, correctly as it did in the first part of the example. So the extend shown here was used for a balloon satellite project at John Brown University and um, so the multi-point setup that I was showing here we used it um, so we had a chase vehicle and we also had uh, at John Brown University we were tracking the balloon and so we used the extend modules um, one on the balloon and then uh, one in the car and one at John Brown University to use a point to multi-point setup and so it worked really great you can see in the video link below uh, the full like footage and a bit more explanation about the project and so um, we were able to get a full range of about 50 miles I calculated um, and the balloon ended up reaching 98,000 feet so we we're really impressed by it um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions um, about how to program it yourself I'd be happy to answer in the comments um, and so yeah thanks for watching bye